this is an early hypothesis. I don't think it's baked in any level of uh, research or anything like that, but it's a gut feel. And I think there's four areas that will eventually emerge for how AI will be bought or used by you and I. I think the first one is LLMs. And obviously we have a few LLMs in place, but that's actually going to, um, that's I think going to uh, accelerate because the next chapter in LLMs is actually LLMs that are domain specific. So not just large language model, but large language model for medical and not just for medical, but for drug discovery and not just for drug discovery, but for cell therapy, right? So you're going to have to keep going down and training this to be able to get the right advantage. So there's a set of companies that I think will come through and will be the beneficiaries of that in the long run. So that's one area of sort of investment, innovation and things to come. In the second one, and this one um, I feel um, is going to happen sooner than later, and it's the point that I think Glenn was making, you have to mix and match a bunch of these different things. So you need a GitHub sort of a place that you can go to. It's an open space source repository. You pull in an ML routine, you pull in some generative AI that is specific to the purpose you're looking at. You bring in some visuals or a CV and a computer vision into it, and you mix and match and you build that. And I don't think that's quite happened, but I actually think that'll be a second area of investment, of innovation, and therefore, you know, place that we'll be uh, extracting value from. The third area I actually think is going to be capabilities that actually integrate and orchestrate different components of technology. So the sales forecasting example that I gave you use machine learning. It uses generative AI. It uses computer vision to be able to read it off of PDFs and convert to text. It uses a bunch of different things. And you know, if you and I and all of us just sat down and started hand cobbling each of these components to build a value chain, which is really what I need, it's actually very hard to do. And so there's going to be, um, I think, companies and startups that will come through that will actually seamlessly pull it together into an orchestrated value chain so you and I can put it into use. And then I think the fourth area, and this we're seeing today already, is um, the ISVs or the current existing software providers will integrate generative AI into their application itself. And so for you and I, as an example, you know, we don't have to go outside of, I'm going to pick, put Excel as an example, I don't, I don't need to speak about vendors. Um, and instead of then sort of coming out and going to somewhere else, you'll have that integrated into that, into that application. And so I actually think there's four segments. Um, there's different levels of capitals that are going in right now and each have a different investment return profile. But I think the level of the pace of innovation is actually the slowest it'll ever be. And, and we'll see some great things come out from each of those.